Right, I'm Ed Winter, I'm the Chief Executive Officer of FastJet. I started as a pilot. Uh, I was a pilot in BOAC, in British Airways, and eventually got bored with just being a pilot. Um, I went into management and did a whole bunch of um, flight operations type roles in British Airways, and then some fairly senior ones. And then in the late 90s, um, EasyJet and Ryanair had just started, and British Airways thought, is the low-cost market something we should be involved in? And there was myself and um, Barbara Cassani, who was the general manager in the States at the time, and a couple of others. Um, we're in a project team where we looked at the low-cost market and decided, should British Airways um, have a low-cost airline? And not long after that, um, I, I was the chief operating officer of GO, which was the British Airways low-cost airline, which we started at Stansted. So that was really a huge change in my career, um, going off into the low-cost market. We were hugely successful, um, grew profitably, and then we did a, a management buyout with um, 3i. And then a year later, we actually sold the airline to EasyJet, merged the two airlines together. And I went across into EasyJet as the integration director, putting the two airlines together, and then I stayed as chief operating officer. Our current business, um, really interesting. Um, FastJet PLC um, is an airline operating in Africa. Um, we're gonna be a low cost, pan-African airline. We're bringing something totally new to Africa. Um, Africa at the moment has got chronically unreliable aviation. It's hugely expensive. Um, connectivity is really poor. Um, our intent is to develop an airline with European standards of quality, safety, reliability flying throughout Africa, bringing travel to the groups of people who currently just can't travel. At the moment in Africa, um, what aviation there is, is primarily focused on business traffic, tourists, and high net worth individuals. The average man in the street can't fly. We're gonna change all of that. We're gonna democratize air travel in Africa. So a hugely exciting company, a hugely exciting project, uh, which we've embarked on a few months ago. The short term plan, we said that within six months, we'll have five aircraft. Within a year, we'll have 15 aircraft. Now that would be very ambitious if we were just starting an airline in one place but we already have four air operator certificates. We've got um, an, an airline which we effectively bought, which is the platform which we're launching FastJet from, and that's got an operation in Tanzania, in Kenya, and over in West Africa in Accra, and in Angola. So four operations already in place, and we're transforming those into FastJet, which would be our low-cost airline. Now, me medium term, um, I see us developing in those four bases, but already we're talking to a significant number of other countries around the continent with the aim to actually increase that to many more operations over time. So FastJet will become, it will appear to the traveling public as one airline that just covers Africa. It'll be using one web website to book on. If you travel in East Africa or West Africa on FastJet, it will appear to be the same airline. But because of the regulatory controls, clearly there are separate airlines under the regulatory control of each of those countries, but all operating to exactly the same standards and selling through a common platform. So that, who knows how big it could be. Um, we talk about maybe 40 aircraft after three years. I think if you look at the, the way in which EasyJet, Ryanair have expanded across Europe and transposed that sort of operation with multiple bases across Africa, you can see a very, very large operation. We spent a lot of time talking to people in Africa, obviously to find out who our customers will be, do people want what we're, we're providing. And yes, like everywhere else in the world, that low cost airlines have developed and stimulated the market and allowed people who currently can't travel to travel, people who don't travel very much to travel much more often, people to connect with friends, businessmen to widen their marketplace, all of these things are exactly what the African people want, the same as everybody else in the world. So there's no reason why the low-cost model, which has been so successful everywhere else in the world, can't work within Africa. And I think the timing is just right now as well, because over the past few years, it probably was too early, but right now, GDP growth in many of the countries in Africa um, is accelerating. Um, there's a lot of um, 
money flowing in, into the economy is from gas, from oil, from minerals. And unlike what might have happened in the past, where that money went to perhaps a very, very small group of society, that money is now flowing into a much larger group of the population. And so therefore allowing that, that group to have um, disposable income to exercise their privileges. Um, and I think that gives us a point in time when now is just the right time to, to do this. In Africa, there are huge challenges. Um, anybody who's worked in Africa knows that there's infrastructure issues um, galore. Now, as we've developed this and we've looked at how we make it happen, Clearly, we've, we've seen lots of areas where we're going to work very hard to change things, to deliver the product we want, we want to deliver. But none of that's insurmountable. You can do it. In fact, when we started on this project, there was a bit of a phrase around the office when things happened and people said, oh, it's Africa. Now, I've banned that because we know it's Africa. We know the infrastructure issues are there. We just get on with it and do it and we find workarounds. So they are issues. I think there are also some, um, some political issues, or some government issues around the level of taxation. Um, generally, um, around Africa, aviation has been treated as a little bit of a source of a wealth tax because of the sort of people who've been traveling. So businesses that are fairly insensitive to, to price um, and high net worth individuals, tourists who might be there once. Um, and so you find that there are very high departure taxes, um, quite high charges for people's visas to go into countries, high fuel tax. Now, all of these things work against stimulating the market. And so a lot of our challenge at the moment is actually persuading some of these countries that they will benefit hugely, because not just from aviation benefit, like if you've got another several million passengers coming through your country, um, they will all pay more departure tax and more fuel tax and so on. But the real benefit is the benefit they bring to your community and to your economy. If in a craft, for example, instead of 1.8 million passengers, they have four or five million passengers, just imagine what that does to tourism, to hotels, to the infrastructure, to businesses that will develop within the country and the, the whole wealth that brings into the economy. So it goes way beyond aviation. It actually changes a community. When, when people ask me, what, what's the biggest achievement you've made? I, I've done lots of things over my career, obviously. But I think the, the thing I'm most proud of is actually being part of the low-cost airline revolution, if you like. When I look now at what that's done in the whole world, but in Europe particularly, the number of journeys that take place, the interconnectivity between countries, between people, that wouldn't have taken place if we hadn't developed low-cost airlines. And I, I sort of been part of that. You know, a small part of it is probably the proudest bit of my, my career. I think the, the advice for somebody joining the industry, like it's a hugely exciting industry, it's something which is, is quite seductive in once you've joined the travel industry and aviation, people don't tend to move out of it. But I think a bit of advice would be, don't be afraid of change, don't be afraid of doing different things. Um, certainly right into my career, um, when I started in aviation I was a pilot. I found lots of other things that I could do as well. I think also it's really important to listen to the customers. Don't think you've got all the answers. Listen to what people want. Where do I go on holiday? I suppose over the last number of years, I've been to Barbados a lot because I've actually had a house there. Um, that's been a family home for a while. And so that's been my relaxation. Um, it's a place where I've been able to go and just go easy when I've been stressed. Um, but we decided to move on from that. And in fact, we're, we're about to, to move on from that home and embark on adventures in other parts of the world. So who knows where?